So we actually reached out or, you know, spoke with ChatGPT to ask it, you know, what benefit does it have for business owners? You know, like, why does it matter to business owners at all? Why should you care? Why is it relevant? And in ChatGPT's own words, ChatGPT is an AI language model developed by OpenAI. So that's the company that's created ChatGPT that can help your business to automate and optimize various aspects of your operations, which we thought was actually super interesting. And we'll talk a bit more about how we've been using ChatGPT as well. But some of the things when you're considering that is customer service. Mm -hmm. Right. So ChatGPT can actually power the chatbots that you're using. So if you are currently using chatbots and it's something to consider, especially if you're a solopreneur, or you're running with a really small team, yeah. you could actually use ChatGPT to add a more natural language and a bit more information behind what your chatbot would say to a customer who's reaching out. And because sometimes these chatbots are very obvious and yeah. ChatGPT is way more natural. So I think that's super interesting. Another thing ChatGPT can help with is marketing. So it can actually generate natural language just like Tiff was saying with the chatbots for all of your marketing materials whether it's social media posts websites blogs newsletter YouTube descriptions yeah newsletters uh, even can help you with canva posts which we're gonna touch on later but it's pretty it's really good for ideation mm -hmm. with regard to marketing and then you can let it do maybe your first draft at the very least but at least it gets you going and it's it's better than maybe you think it is yeah. And then the other one is operations. So this could be across various aspects of your business. And we'll talk about how we're using it more. But one thing that ChatGPT itself highlighted was even like recruitment and like talent training, which is mm. super interesting. And the recruitment piece, yes, it can definitely write you blog posts. It could probably review resume copy even and say like, hey, did this person make grammar mistakes or anything like that? Like things I wouldn't want. Mm. So like I'm not interested in. And it could probably take that for you or say yeah. like, summarize how much experience this person has in this field and would be able to pull all of that data in and give you that information. That's awesome. So that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, and then when we talk about analytics and other operational measures, ChatGPT could definitely help you in this arena as well. So that's like what ChatGPT is and what it explains itself to be. And we want to talk about how we've been using ChatGPT. The first thing that stood out that I think I used it for was to see how it could write a blog post. Yes. Um, and, and that we, was pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So some of our blog posts that you see on our blog, but let us explain, are using ChatGPT, but not in the way you think. So not like, hey, ChatGPT, write us a blog post about how to grow on Instagram. We would actually take the transcript from one of our videos. So one of the videos that you're watching, this is all about repurposing, or we take all of our notes that we'd have. So whether it be the script, the transcript or notes, and then we give that to ChatGPT and we ask it to format it. And it does a pretty good job yes. and format it in a conversational tone is yeah. the also key so part. So it's all our original ideas that we have already put out there into the world. And we're just, instead of us taking it, because what I used to physically do was write brand new blog posts based on our YouTube videos. Yeah. And that's a lot was, of work. That's a lot of work. It's time consuming and it sort of feels repetitive because sometimes we write out a complete script. Sometimes we just write notes and riff. Yeah. Like right now we're riffing. So using ChatGPT to sort of like take our existing IP, I guess, and then just sort of format it for blogging was pretty damn cool because it, it didn't really have to insert itself because it's, its original ideas aren't always phenomenal. And it can be a little awkward and mm -hmm. it's an, or a little generic. So at least it's taken our, our stuff and then just made it very readable and conversational. It's very interesting. Quite impressive. It's pretty impressive. And yeah. then again, no grammar mistakes, none of that. And also done in like literally 30 seconds. Yes. The other thing that I'm really loving chat GPT for is getting variations for ad copies. So ad mm. copy is a bit different than when you're thinking about writing a, a regular social media post. It's usually like you want different ways to play with hooks, to play with different types of messaging, just to be able to compare them against each other and see what works better. So I'll usually feed chat GPT some like prompts, some examples of ads and then also like different types of copy and say like hey give me five more ways that I can say this with this audience and then try to see if there's anything interesting there whether or not I actually take the what it gives me it helps me like it's like somebody you're bouncing ideas off of mm. it's kind of weird it's almost like you're That's having a, a person it. yeah, yeah it's like you're it's like uh, so colleague. I'm always just like hey I'm doing this here's what I have and then I'm like what other ways could I say this and then it'll give me some and then I'm like all right let's try this and you're it's like literally having a work colleague that's virtual so, so weird <laughs> but it doesn't exist um I don't know if anyone's watched Machena I think it's called ex Machena or something Machina Machina 
Okay, okay so yeah. how you pronounce it? But you know, like in her, remember yeah, that movie that with crazy. the yeah. So I don't know. We'll see how this how far this AI goes. But mm. again, that's a really interesting use case where it's still all your knowledge that you're using. So you're not asking ChatGPT to create something from scratch, but you're getting somebody to bounce ideas off of and kind of help you in certain areas. We've also used it for full job descriptions for a couple of roles that we've had out recently, and it and did well. Yeah. <laughs> Like that's been actually one of the coolest. <laughs> yeah, ones. I'd say that's the coolest one because, like, listen, they're all the same for the most part, right? It's yeah, just... we just like add our little spread. Like, I feel like one other caveat to all of this is that you almost never take exactly what it outputs and then just use it. No, like you take it and then you review it and you tweak it because otherwise it's it doesn't. Feel, there's something about it's it. It's cold. Yet it's cold. Yeah, it doesn't feel human yet. Yeah, and it sometimes misses the nuance. Like it'll, it might just use the wrong descriptive word. I'm like, oh, I don't want. I don't mean like that. Yeah, I mean it like this and. You just tweak it and it's less work to tweak it than it is to write it from scratch. Yeah. So it's almost like getting someone to do draft one for you. Yeah. Really, really it'd be like, yeah, if you had like a junior copywriter doing the first draft or something, yep. you still have to do the research. So that's the thing. Like it still has to come from you and it yeah. should still be your knowledge. But exactly like that, where I wrote like for one of them, like, hey, we're hiring a paid social media specialist, which we're hiring a paid social media specialist. So if anyone's mm -hmm. looking out there, holler. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I said like, these are the things that we're going to want them to do. Can you turn it into a job description? And there you go. Very cool. Another thing we've used it for is social copy. Now, this is an interesting one. Out of all the different things, would you say that this is the one where it does the worst? The, the worst. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I'm trying to find a and I wouldn't even say use it. So, tested it to see what it does. And it's just does, it's not it. It just doesn't have it. And again, this is because there is a level of like connection. Like the brand voice too, right? Yeah, there's the brand voice. There's a level of connection that you want to create when you're writing copy and you're writing these captions to, you know, inspire your community, connect with them, entertain them and all these things. And it, the AI just does not have it as it stands right now. And I think to an extent it shouldn't. Yeah, it probably shouldn't because there's, well, I guess in the end you could train a human, like if they onboarded in your company, you could train them with the brand voice. So I guess it's just still a you little could weird. You eventually get there. Yeah, but it's not, it doesn't have it for sure. And it's just weird. It uses the same types of words and it's just not, it's not good. Yeah. And you could read it and tell. Like I feel yeah. like people who, the more it becomes sort of prevalent in mm -hmm. society and you see it everywhere, you're going to be like, oh, that wasn't someone, someone yeah. didn't write that. That was an AI. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not as, you know, if you're trying to be slick and like get it to do these things for you and, and, and just use what it gives you, you're going to get, people are going to see through that. So 100%. The more we're talking about this and the more we've tested it, the more it seems to, like we said, be an assistant and kind of like a drafter. And yeah. It's a time saver and an ideation, you know, bouncer offerer. Yeah, I guess. Bouncer offerer. Yeah, yeah literally, that's, the, that's what it is. Bouncing yeah. off. Bouncer offerer for sure. The other thing that we've used it for is for YouTube titles and descriptions. And again, when I'm saying this, the YouTube titles don't love it for the YouTube titles. I think it's very basic, even yeah. when you really try to give it more complex and challenge it a little bit. It's still not great. But the descriptions, and when we're talking about writing keyword dense descriptions, uh, we actually just give ChatGPT the keywords we want to include and what the video is about, or even just the, the script of the video and say, make this into a YouTube description. And it does that pretty well. And yeah. how many people really are reading the YouTube descriptions? It's just to really give YouTube the information about what the video is about. Yeah. The if you ever read one of our YouTube descriptions, please let me know. I'm actually curious. Um, <laughs> so please let us know. Uh, but normally it's more the links that matter. And I don't really think people are writing the, reading the summary. They're just watching the actual video. They might skim the summary. Yeah. And or they'll head down to see the links because they've already watched the video. So the summary is useless if you've already watched the video. Yeah. And you're going down for the links to the different other videos or resources, resources or that type of stuff. So I imagine it's mostly for that. Just telling it's an additional way for SEO, for YouTube SEO, really. And then on a personal level, I've actually used ChatGPT for recipes. So that's just a random one I throw. I want to throw yeah, out there. No, it it's up. almost like an assistant that you have in a way. So you can ask it certain things. But for example, you could prompt it to say like, hey, I have these four things in the refrigerator. Give me three meal ideas I can make with all the ingredients. And it'll pop them out. You saw it. I, it's I pretty impressive. So, much. so it's things that like so that. Good. Or you can say, hey, give me a workout routine. I have eight pound dumbbells. Let me know something I can do in this time. And it'll give you that. So like those are some interesting things because that's looking at it as a search engine more so than which is where I feel like it really shines still mm. is in the search engine, but more accessible and more customizable because you get to have this like back and forth with it that you can't have with Google once you pop in 
the, your thing in Google, it's not like you're really going back and forth. No. You'd have to search something new. Like you can challenge it and yeah. you can say, well, okay, yep, that's cool, but do it like this. Yeah, exactly, which I love. Yeah. yeah. Even for like talking about this content, mm -hmm. we did one for one of our podcasts last night. It was yeah. Tiff's idea that it was to get ChatGPT to write a script for the podcast of the three hosts reviewing a song or like just having a discussion about something mm -hmm. and it was hilarious it was actually it's even funny to just test it and it wasn't it wasn't doing it right it wrote a script i'm like okay so that's cool for the script now write it so that we all have lines yeah so you just sort of like keep tweaking it and and asking it to do things and you got to change the language so it's there is a bit of skill involved in it i think that's maybe the the information that people don't get just yet they yes. might try it once not get the results they want and give up but it's really about sort of continuing to ask it the right questions in mm -hmm. the right way to get the best response. So here's how ChatGPT can help you and really be introduced into your workflow. So the well, first thing that obviously we're gonna talk about is social. So when you're thinking about social, ChatGPT can be really helpful as an ideation machine here for you. So you can ask it for specific ideas. Again, be specific in your prompts to it. Ask it to think as a social media marketer that's attracting a certain audience and then ask it for those ideas. So you wouldn't just say like, hey, ChatGPT, write me four ideas on how to grow on social media. You would say, hey, ChatGPT, act as a fitness trainer. You're a fitness trainer. You have social media marketing skills and you want to attract women who are in their 30s who are too busy to work out on the daily. Give me five social media carousel ideas I could write to interest them, you know, to attract them. So you have to be very specific. Yeah. Then that's how you'll get some good content out of it. And then, of course, if you ever have something where you want to just make sure your grammar is correct or you have no spelling errors, things like that, you could actually pop your copy back in that you would write and say like, hey, can you check for grammar and make sure that I'm good with everything here and then and we obviously we were focusing more on social here and then another thing that was very interesting is you can actually take a bunch of prompts from chat gpt so you could say like give me 10 15 ideas or 15 carousels you can add that into an excel spreadsheet and then bring that over into canva and upload that into canva and have canva make you the designs from that so these are ways where it can like streamline your workflow which are super super interesting that i think is for say a business owner watching this wanting to streamline social that's a big part of it for sure yeah. so i'd say like ideating and copywriting companion that's a great way to feels look at right it. right yeah. yeah so even just using canvas functionality that allows it to do that is super cool it's, yeah. it's really about you know obviously if you're a busy business owner you really focus on efficiency here and just getting the most out of the you know the time that you put in so this is one way to do it like tiff was saying prime it use it to get the information tweak it and edit it and then, you know, you can use other facilities. Well, okay, cool. Now I need to create graphics so you can slap it right in Canva and mm -hmm. then let it do its thing for you. Then you can tweak that. Yeah. So it's really, once again, it's like using all of these tools as either assistants or like first drafters or something like that to just make your life easier so that you can get back to focusing on your business and obviously focus on building your community yeah. on social. All right, guys, that is it for today. It's a different type of video today because it's a big conversation topic. And, you know, like we kind of like we're not going to talk about it for a while, but it keeps getting brought up. So we thought, all right, let's just shoot it's something time. quick on it and just yeah. let you know our thoughts. Thank you so much for coming back to watch another video. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe below and hit the notification bell. Let us know what you think about ChatGPT in the yeah. comments below and go check out this video that will be available for you next. We think that you will love it. We'll see you in the next video. Peace. Bye.